guys, it's April and the end of the month is here. March is over and that means wrap up. So I've already done two other wrap ups this month. I've done my mid month wrap up and I've also done my Rita Rama wrap up. I will link them up above and down below in case you want to check them out because I did read some fairly interesting books in those two weeks. But this video is about the last two weeks of March and I may have gone a little bit crazy. I mean, it doesn't really look like it, but I kind of, yeah, there's nine or so books that I need to talk about today. So we're going to do this fairly quickly. I'm going to try and be concise and boil down all of my feelings into a nice little tight little ball so you guys can get a general idea of how my reading went. And then if there are books that you are interested in that I started to talk about, let me know down below and we'll start a conversation and we'll figure out if it's, it's something you want to know more about because that's what I'm here for. I'm here about the conversations because you guys are amazing. Have I said that lately? I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling just really, really gushy right now. It's been a weird day. The first book I want to talk about is Cold Spell by Jackson Pierce. This is a buddy read that I did with Shayla over at Shake Geeks Out. Go and check her out because she's kind of awesome. This is part of Jackson Pierce's fairy tale retelling series, and this one takes on the Snow Queen, which is one of my favorite fairy tales ever. So I was really, really excited to see how this one played out. This book centers around a girl named Jenny and her best friend named Kai. Kai becomes enchanted by this girl who then takes off with Kai and Jenny is on a mission to get Kai back because she is fairly certain that Kai did not leave on his own free will. This follows the Snow Queen story pretty closely and I do like how it took some of the elements of Jenny's journey and it twisted a little bit because she hits certain points in this journey where she learns more about herself and this journey that she is on builds her up into a person that she can be proud of which at the very beginning of the story Jenny was not a character I liked at all I had a hard time rooting for a character who puts all of their being into another person but as this journey went on you got to see Jenny grow and I was very very thankful for that so I did enjoy this book because it did take the essence of the Snow Queen story and it did build it out into a way that I was fairly happy with because it's been a long time since I've met a Snow Queen retelling that takes the essence of the Snow Queen in a way that I can just I can get behind and this one was one of them and because I read that retelling of the Snow Queen I decided that I needed to pick up a version of the Snow Queen this is my mom's and my aunt's version and I absolutely love it because it just makes me smile and of course it's got it's got little illustrations and then it's got you know pictures from the movie and I yeah this was just a nostalgia read for me I enjoyed it so much like I said this is one of my favorite fairy tales and so I just I had to read it plus I wanted to see if I was remembering the story the way that it was actually written by the Andersons so that this happened. Then I read A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is the story of the crew of the Wayfair. Rosemary joins this interesting cast of characters. She's running from her past and this story just takes on human emotions and other species and other technology and it wraps this up and this is like really messed up story plays with some of the interesting things that we do to ourselves and finding connections I don't want to say human connections because this isn't just about humans it's about other species it's about other sentience which I really really came to like but it's just how all of those play together and what that really means I don't even know how to explain this story I mean it takes a little bit of firefly it takes a little bit of any kind of like I don't want to say high school trauma, but you know, it takes some of that too and it melds it up into this huge big emotional mess that I found rather entertaining. I don't know if that explained the story whatsoever, but the but but that that is this. This is basically what happens when you put a whole bunch of humans and other species inside a spaceship, put them in this politically charged environment and things happen. I also picked up Emperor Mage by Tamir Pierce. This is the third book in the Immortal series which I'm doing a whole read along with. I will link all of that information because it needs to happen. And this of course means that this is part of the Tortal universe. Dane's story continues here where she ends up in Karthak meeting a lot of people from Numer's past. Now previously this book has probably not been my favorite in the series, but with the release of Tempest and Slaughter by Tamira Pierce and the start of the Numer 
Dark Chronicles. This one has gained a stronger place in my heart because you get to see the characters that are starting to develop in that series play out in this series and just seeing how different they are from different perspectives. It's a really interesting experience because each of us are tainted by our own life experiences and so we view people differently. So you can see how Numer views these characters as a young man and then you get to see how Dane views these characters as a young woman and these being older characters. I just like seeing how that dynamic changed and the perspective changed and it's made me really really excited to pick up the Realms of the Gods. I've managed to hold off so far but I don't think I'm going to be able to hold off much longer. That, that's probably going to be coming up soon. I also picked up Gastrophysics by Charles Spence. This takes the science of eating and sort of kind of explains how our experience of eating actually affects the way we perceive and we taste and we experience food. So it comes down to our life experience, the atmosphere we're eating with, the people we're eating with, the utensils we're eating with, the sounds that are going on, pretty much everything in our environment affects food. And so it goes and explains all the different interesting things some of these high-end restaurants are trying with their food. Some of them, I, did, I just, why, why would you who wants that kind of experience and other ones I'm like maybe that could kind of work. I just find food really interesting. I love food. I love watching all kinds of food shows even though I'm not necessarily the one who cooks a lot. There's something about the chemistry of food and the science behind food, the art behind food that I just find fascinating. So this read was right up my alley. There are a lot of things that I am never ever going to try because I just like eating my food. I don't need my food to be that big of a production, but I can understand where some of that science and some of that play comes out. I don't know. And then I picked up The Man Who Loves Books Too Much by Alison Bartlett. This is a nonfiction read where Bartlett goes and discovers the story of John Gilkey, who has a need to collect books. But this isn't necessarily collecting books the oddest way, it's more of borrowing without asking and not returning kind of way. So Bartlett goes through this journey of understanding Gilkey and understanding this whole realm of book collectors. And I found it fascinating because I myself obviously like to collect books. I'm not necessarily into the rare book collecting, so paying thousands of dollars for a book just gives me a little bit of heartburn, but I can understand where the love of books brings people to a place where they want to surround themselves with that love of books. It also explores some people's need to collect books to appear more intellectual, and it also goes to the other end with people who are collecting it out of love and don't always show it off and it isn't a big thing to them, but they just like having this kind of information surrounding them. At points reading it, it, it was a little weird because it felt like Gilkey was starting to get this kind of idolization by Barlett just because she started to understand and sympathize with his need for having these books. And that started to feel a little weird for me and I don't, I don't really, yeah, that, that was a thing. Seeing the book collecting world I found fascinating. I then picked up Twilight at Blueberry Barrens by Colleen Kobold. This is the third book in the Sunset Cove series. No, I have not read the first two books. I don't know what possessed me to just pick up this third book and read it, but I did. It's a thing that happened. It follows the story of Kate, who is trying to keep her family's Blueberry Barrens alive. She's struggling with it. She just got in recovery from a very devastating illness, so she's trying to find her life again. And when in walks Drake and his two nieces, and of course, Everything is turned upside down from that. This is a little bit of a murder mystery tied in with a romance, with a god spin, and I did enjoy the journey of trying to figure out who done it kind of thing, but the characters in my mind probably could have been a little more flushed out, the writing a little stronger than it was. This was a quick easy read, there wasn't a whole lot to it, but I felt like the characters a lot of times were very juvenile and it started to annoy me at points. I wanted more out of the characters for an adult read like this, but it was still enjoyable. I also picked up The Unseen World by Liz Moore. This is a story of Ada who's trying to discover her father. Her father is dying 
diagnosed with Alzheimer and is degrading rather rapidly. It switches between young Ada and old Ada. So it starts out when her father starts with the Alzheimer's disease when Ada is 13, 14, and then it jumps to 2009 where Ada is her own woman. She's discovered herself, but she's starting to make some of those connections of things in her father's past. This book was not at all what I was expecting it to be. I mainly picked up this story because Ada is named after Ada Lovelace, so there's a lot of science and technology woven into this story. And so for a little while there, I thought it was going to be some kind of almost sci-fi thing. It, it wasn't. It was just Ada's journey into discovering who her father really was. At the end, I was very happy with the read, even though it was nothing that I expected it to be, and I probably wouldn't have picked it up if I didn't think it was some kind of sci-fi read, because this normally is not the kind of read I am drawn to. I'm not necessarily drawn to the contemporary and the literature end of the reading scale, but I did really truly enjoy it, especially discovering who Ada's father was, because there is a lot of things there, guys. There are a lot of things. And finally, I picked up Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore by Matthew Sullivan. This is the story of Lydia who finds one of the patrons of the bookstore hanging from the rafters. And through this suicide, a lot of Lydia's past is starting to come back. And in the process of all of this stuff coming back, Lydia starts to learn more of what actually happened to her when she was young. Once again, this was a book that I wasn't expecting to be the direction that it was going. And that was probably my bad because I didn't read the synopsis before I, I picked it up. I just picked it up because it was about a bookstore. This is how I pick my reading, guys. So there were parts that got dark in this story. I did enjoy it, but once again, there were characters here that I felt could have been flushed out more. There was a really great plot and a really great undertone to the whole story, but the characters at points just, they didn't live up to everything that was happening, and I wanted more from those characters, and I wanted a bigger build out from all of that, but like I said, I did enjoy the whole journey from point A to point B, so take that as you will. So those were all of the books that I have read in the past two weeks of March, which means that April is now beginning and the chaos begins, which I'm really, really excited about. I'm hoping to still get some videos out, but if I don't, remember that I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.